watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome to Medical Talk. I'm your host, Betty Lamar. Today I'm having a conversation about chronic kidney disease and COVID-19. Joining me is one of the masters in nephrology, Dr. Wissam Balouk. Hi, Dr. Balouk. Welcome to Medical Talk. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? So let's just jump right in. What is chronic kidney disease and um, what are the risks for chronic kidney disease? All right. Uh, first of all, let me explain what nephrologists mean. Okay. Nephrologists, uh, they are the doctors who specialize in any kidney or any disease which affects the kidney. And also they are experts with hypertension. Uh, we see a lot of kidney disease. Uh, it's being referred to us usually from primary care to our office. Or we see any patients who had uh, injury to their kidney and they don't function very well in the hospital. Most of the disease we monitor in our clinic, they call chronic kidney disease. Uh, chronic kidney disease, it's a gradual uh, lose of function of your kidney. As you know, we have two kidneys. Their job is to filter all the toxins and the excess fluid the body has. So. If the kidney, for some reason, they're not functioning very well, so they're not filtering, and you accumulate toxins in the body, and you probably retain fluid, and you could have a lot of complication and other uh, problems like hypertension, edema, swelling. There is a lot of things comes from chronic kidney disease. Okay, so what caused? Uh people to have uh, kidney disease in the first place? Let me tell you, first of all, chronic kidney disease, it's called a silent disease. Mm. So a lot of people, they won't feel anything. It's not like a toothache. You're going to hurt, you're going to go see a dentist. A lot of people, they will lose a significant amount of their kidney function and still have no symptom or they won't feel any pain. Uh, some people, when the kidney function is kind of very severe, they will get to the point where they become edematist. They somehow they check their blood pressure, blood pressure is very high, or they become short of breath because they're retaining fluid in their lungs. So I really recommend that you do a physical exam on a yearly basis and only blood test sometime will detect that you have dysfunction of the kidney and then you will be referred to a kidney specialist. Going back to your question, the people who are at risk for chronic kidney disease, they are very common in our area, especially Memphis. Mm. First things, obesity. Oh. Second things, hypertension. And the third one is diabetes. So Unfortunately, here in Memphis, one time we were named the unhealthiest city in the nation just because of, unfortunately, a lot of obesity. You see a lot of junk food and McDonald's and Burger King in every corner. Yes. It's very hard to get uh, healthy food and vegetable. They're much more expensive than, you know, eating a junk food. So obesity hypertension, diabetes, will put you at very high risk of having a chronic kidney disease. And unfortunately, you won't be able to tell without doing a physical exam to check the blood pressure and do a blood work to know, to check something called creatinine. And that will give you the idea how, what's the function of the kidney, we, we call it glimeral filtration rate. Okay, so, is there anything that a person like myself can do to avoid chronic kidney disease? I mean, since it's a silent thing, I mean, how do you know what to do and what not to do? Okay. It's, since it's a chronic kidney disease, it's a silent disease, so you need to prevent it because when it's happened, 
there's no going back. Oh. You, it will continue to progress. We don't have a magic treatment to, to cure it, but we can slow it down and treat the complication. What you need to do to prevent chronic kidney disease, the first thing is stay healthy, eat healthy, try to uh, lose weight and keep your PMI under good control, exercise, drink plenty of water, and if you have high blood pressure, you have to control it and check with your doctors on a regular basis and control your blood pressure. If you are diabetic, you have to get uh, your sugar under control so that so you will not progress chronic kidney disease rapidly and stay away from bad medicines. And I would recommend this and everybody should hear this. NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, Advil, ibuprofen, Aleve, BC powders, they are good for pain, but if you take it in like candy <laughs> every day, you are putting yourself for damaging your kidney and lose kidney function. Wow. Especially if you have chronic kidney disease, we tell the patient stay away from them and take acetaminophen, which is kind of safer on the kidney. So this is all with the instruction with the primary care and the nephrologist. But eating healthy, staying away from high salt diet, controlling your blood pressure, stay away from uh, NSAID and any toxic medication to the kidney, uh, exercise, running, uh, that's the main things you can do. Again, drinking plenty of water. Okay, well, uh, thank you, Dr. Balu. We're gonna go to our next segment. Uh, stay tuned for more Medical Talk with my very special guest, Dr. Wissam Balouk. In just a moment, we are com we're coming back and we're going to talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. GHS-TV started in 1982, and it was just a couple of cameras, a couple of on-air personality, and it's really grown into what you see today. It's a multi-million dollar studio with top-of-the-line technology. Being able to operate you know, all of the machinery in the control room, uh, being able to use all of our software and hardware that we have around the studio uh, is a great skill because this is top-of-the-line equipment. I feel like this class has brightened my horizon. It's something that I never thought I would be doing, um, especially as a student. GHS TV is probably one of the most hands-on experiences a student will ever get in their lifetime. Welcome back to Crosstalk. Nothing really has just the vibe that we have here. Especially after you finish, you get a real rush of, wow, I just did that. By the time a student graduates from Germantown High School, they will know pretty much every position there is from producing to directing um, to on-air work. You learn time management, you learn organization, you learn how to work with people, how to better communicate with people. We put a lot on them and they have to be able to have the responsibility and the knowledge to get everything that we ask them. I had very little experience. Uh, so in the past three years, the skills that I've learned have, have absolutely exponentially grown. The class has actually helped me figure out that I want to go to college for journalism. When a student graduates, they are the best possible version of themselves that they can be. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. For more information about the Kappa program, visit GHSKappa.com or call 755-7775. watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Medical Talk. I'm your host, Betty Lamar. Joining me is Dr. Wissam Balouk, and we're talking about what you, the viewer, need to know about COVID-19. Welcome back, Dr. Balouk. Thank you so much for joining me. I am learning so much today, as I knew I would. <clears throat> All right, how are you doing? I'm okay. doing great. Thank now, you for having me back. Oh, of course, always, and, you're the best. And as, as you know, we have a pandemic right now. Yes. I'm gonna just briefly, probably a lot of people heard about COVID-19 and on the news all day, but I wanna remind the people, how is it transmitted? So how you protect yourself? Okay, we used to say about touch a surface and cleaning surface and stuff. All the new study is still uh, want you to wash your hand and clean the surface. 
but it's very, very important to wear a mask because the disease is transmitted or the virus is transmitted from an infected patient through his respiratory symptom, uh, syndrome uh, symptoms to another healthy individual. So if somebody is infected while you're talking, while you're coughing, sneezing, you're gonna transmit it to the next uh, individual, especially if it's in a crowded area with less than six feet. So if you know how is it transmitted, you know how to protect yourself. I would recommend wearing mask especially for the person who's infected, especially who is the person who carrying the, uh, the virus. Now, you may not know you're carrying the virus, so that's why we recommend everybody to wear masks, especially if they're going to a grocery store or going to a crowded area. The disease or the virus will be transmitted to uh, the other individual between people especially if you are sitting in a small, crowded, poorly ventilated area. So that's why we would recommend that if you're going to have some gathering, it ha they have to be less than 10 people and stay in a ventilated area or maybe an outdoor will be much better and try to keep the social distancing. So poorly ventilated, closed area, this is the key. Uh, churches, mosques, uh, schools sometimes, so unfortunately, uh, and uh, bars. So bars will be very high risk of transmitting this virus. Okay, well, Dr. Ballou, you know, we hear, they talk a lot about people that are, what is it, asymptomatic? How long can a person mm -hmm. have the, the virus without symptoms? And I know they're still spreading the, the, the virus, but do they ever become symptomatic? Do they ever know they have it? Okay. This, the patients can have this from 1 to 14 days. But usually, you are going to have some symptoms within the 4 to 5 days. So if you are exposed in the today, you have to watch yourself in the next 5 days and try to stay away from other people. Unfortunately, you may have it and not even have any symptoms. Mm. Or you could have some fever or body ache, that's the most common symptoms, and you'll be transmitted to, to other uh, individual and you don't even know about it. So my recommendation, especially I'm a kidney specialist, we have to protect the people at higher risk. The people who are at risk of getting complication from the virus. They are older patient population. It's like your mom and my mom and, and uh, grandfather and grandmother. People who are not healthy, they have chronic disease. And one of them is chronic kidney disease. And this is where I'm interested and I see a lot of COVID patients with complication because people who have chronic kidney disease, they are at higher risk of having a complication from the virus. They will not have it as a simple flu symptoms and for, for a week or two and, and you get better. They are the people who may end up in the hospital and may end up in the intensive care unit on the ventilators. So we want to concentrate on this individual with high risk. People who are at high risk, one of them is chronic kidney disease, people who have lung disease, again, diabetes, obesity, and unfortunately, African-American too, they are at high risk. Most of the patients I have seen in the hospital, and they end up on the ventilator, they have three things, obesity, diabetes, and African-American. This is very unfortunate. So if we put our concentration on what we need to do and who are the people we need to protect, these are the individual, chronic kidney disease, diabetic, obese, hypertension, chronic lung disease, heart problem, and elder patients. So if a young individual has this disease, he needs to stay away from their elder uh, family member or mm -hmm. people who have uh, chronic diseases in their family. And that's why it's very important. I mean, we're 
when we open the school, we're not really worried about the kids as much. I know you, you know, kids still can get infected and they could have a complication like something called Kawasaki. But we're worried when they take it home mm. to their elder grandma and their uh, people at home who had chronic diseases. Okay. Well, let me so, ask you this. Let me ask you this really quick before we're going to move into the next segment when we're going to talk about get really down into the comorbidities. Okay, like a friend of mine, her husband unfortunately passed away uh, with COVID-19. He was in his 50s. Uh, but right after he was in um, ICU, she said he went on dialysis. Does that mean that if he, was, he went on dialysis due to the COVID-19 or is that because he already had chronic kidney disease? Okay, so uh, again, kidney disease put you at risk of having a complication for uh, COVID-19. But again, anybody who has COVID-19 and become really sick, they will have something called cytokine storms. Your immune system become very active. And a lot of patients who end up in the intensive care unit, almost 80%, they will end up with some renal dysfunction. Oh. So I am seeing a lot of people in the intensive care unit with an acute kidney injury, regardless of their baseline kidney function. They could have a normal kidney. When they have this severe reaction from the COVID-19, this will cause a lot of cytokines to be released uh, it's like if you think about it, it's your immune system is, is storming and trying to fight this virus. And at the same time, it's caused kind of sepsis okay. and damage the kidney. Okay, hold that thought for me because that's where we get them. You just led me right into the next segment. We'll be right back shortly with my very special guest, Dr. Wissam Balouk. And we're going to discuss uh, not only the risk for people with chronic kidney disease and other comorbidities. We really need to go into that because I want to know what's going on with uh, COVID and that affecting the weakness in people. We'll be right back. It's very fun to be in bed, trust me. It's so much fun. When I was a eighth grader and I saw them march and I was like, wow, I need to be a part of this. Our main performing group is the varsity band. That encompasses our marching band and our varsity concert band. We also have the, uh, the jazz ensemble. It's unique, so we're really lucky to have that. I'm very methodical about teaching. I try to stay up to date because I want my students to have the best information that I can pass along to them. He's excellent. He commands a sort of drive that we didn't exactly have. I lead the class, but I also believe in the students self-assessing their work. The leadership is led by the students. We lead most of the practices. It's basically just student-led. I, mean, I think that's important for them to take that kind of ownership. If you want to be a musician, you gain extremely important music skills, music techniques. One, two, three. There's so many opportunities for fellowship and band as a family, and you develop that, that small community. Uh, where you support each other, not only musically, but uh, in many ways. Really, without the band, the football games would be lame. Without the band, you wouldn't really have the pep rallies. The band is like a good foundation for the school spirit. If you want to join band, just do it. I think band was the best part of my high school career. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Medical Talk. I'm your host, Betty Lamar. Joining me is Dr. Wissam Baluk, and uh, we're talking about COVID-19 and comorbidities that are associated with COVID-19. Okay, Dr. Baluk, let's go back and uh, let's talk a little bit more about chronic kidney disease and let's go into the other comorbidities. All right. So, uh, we go back to COVID-19. We talked about the people who are at risk and mm -hmm. one of them is chronic kidney disease and we have hypertension, diabetes, obesity. When 
I would recommend for the patient who think they are uh, infected to get tested and monitor their oxygenation at home. And if they are okay and they are not having any respiratory distress, to stay at home, isolate themselves, drink plenty of water, take some vitamin like vitamin D and C and zinc and some Tylenol for symptom. But if you have uh, respiratory distress, your fever is very high and start shorter breaths and your oxygenation dropping, these were I recommend the patient to go to the hospital. Mm. And over there, we monitor them. And if their oxygenation got worse, sometimes we send them to ICU and intubate them. And again, some of the patients, we monitor their kidney levels during this ICU, and some of them will end up in, on dialysis, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I do have a good success rate usually in our hospital. This is a lot of people, you know, they are recovering hopefully and get off dialysis. So uh, I'm not 100% optimistic they're gonna, you know, I mean pessimistic they're gonna be on dialysis for the rest of their life. I have patients when their COVID improve, their kidney function get back and improve too. Okay. So going back, I mean, if you want to talk about like chronic kidney disease in general, away from COVID and what we need to do about them, and this is actually uh, it's a significant amount of people in our population in Memphis, they have this dysfunction kidney mm -hmm. and they are sent to us. And again, it's a silent disease. So when they come to us, we check their blood level to check their creatinine and they will tell us what uh, stage they are. We have five stages of chronic kidney disease. Mm, okay. One is like their function of the kidney 90%. And stage five, when they're unfortunately kidney almost less than 15% and they are now end up on dialysis. Our goal, and this is what I tell uh, all the patients, our goal not to wait until you are on dialysis to come see a specialist. Okay. Yes. We want to see the patient in the early stages so we can slow it down. We can work together with the patients, controlling their blood pressure, controlling their diabetes, there's a lot of complication of chronic kidney disease. It's like they become anemic, they have a problem with their bones, they lose, you know, their vitamin D will not be functioning very well. Uh, they retain fluid. So we work together and have a plan so we can slow down the progression. And a lot of people will not progress to end up on dialysis. So if you have a chronic kidney disease, it does not mean always you will end up on dialysis. Okay. So that's why it's very important to let your primary care check on your kidney, especially if you're at the high risk, and refer you at a certain level to a specialist to protect your kidney from progressing and ending up on dialysis. Okay, I have a question for you because I don't want to forget this. I normally ask my, my guests about racial disparities. You mentioned um, in the previous segment uh, we was talking about COVID, but we're, right now we're just talking about it in general. What is it about the African-American community that seemed like everything from COVID, uh, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, seemed to affect um, black people or people of color more? Is it diet or what is that? It's actually a multiple factor. Okay. Genetically, it's genes is plays a big part. Okay. okay, and also the diet and the life habits and, and the body habits is play a significant role. I mean, genetically, you're at higher risk of having hypertension. Genetically, you're at higher risk of having diabetes. And the diet will play a significant role if you become, uh, if the patient become obese, that will put them at risk of uh, worsening diabetes control, and that will end up causing chronic kidney disease. So yes, our populations who end up on dialysis, they are in the minority in African American because they are higher risk of becoming uh, diabetic and hypertensive and subsequently they will have a chronic kidney disease. And also they are at risk of other kidney diseases like it's called glomerulonephritis or, or, or other like they're at risk of lupus which also can cause kidney disease. So yes, they are at higher risk. 
uh, the gene you cannot change, you know. Yes, true. But there are things you can change. Okay. The, 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 the diet, the losing weight, controlling your blood pressure, uh, staying away from bad medicine, these are things you can control. Okay, so... But unfortunately, Jean, we can't. True. <laughs> so, do you have people of other cultures, like Caucasian, that have a kidney disease as well? Or is it just more black? Definitely. Okay. Uh, Percentage-wise, it's you... The African-American has higher risk of okay. chronic kidney disease. But all over, definitely, Caucasian, uh, they have risk. They, we have... Uh, you know, overweight uh, Caucasian, we have hypertension, we have different kind of other disease which can affect Caucasian more than African American. So all of them will cause renal failure. And again, our goal is to prevent dialysis. Yes. And slow it, slow down the progression. Plus, if we, God forbid, we end up to the point you need dialysis, the kidney specialist, we will prepare the patient's either send them early for a kidney transplant. And I have personally a lot of successful preemptive kidney transplantation. We have an excellent center here in Methodist uh, University Hospital, where when the kidney is functioning less than 20%, we send the patient early, okay. and especially if, you, if they have a donor, so they will not end up on dialysis. And if, if they need to be on dialysis, we already have the access ready and talk to them about a different modality of dialysis because now we have a very amazing things that's going on is home dialysis. Oh, so you don't have okay. to go to the dialysis center. We have something called peritoneal dialysis where they we have a tube in their belly and we will do dialysis at home using only special uh, fluid. Thank you so much, Dr. Baluk. Wonderful show today. Thanks for watching uh, Medical Talk with Betty Lamar on GHS TV. For more information on our programming, please check us out on the web at ghstv.org, where we are streaming live 24 hours a day. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Betty Lamar from all of us at GHS TV. Thank you for watching Medical Talk, and I hope to see you again soon.